Hi, this is Ruth Elizabeth Hancock, host of Work Your Energy podcast. And this week, I am really excited to announce Kate Montana, who is the author of the brand new book, Cracking the Matrix, which is an incredible book. And I am so excited to ask her some questions today. We've just been having a little brief discussion, and I felt like we needed to press record and get this information down. So hi, Kate. Thank you so much for joining me. And you are joining me from where? Uh, I'm on Maui in Hawaii. (laughs) Okay, that's incredible. What's it like there? Is everything okay? Is everyone safe? Uh, Everyone is safe now. Um, The death toll has been grotesquely skewed downward. Um, you know, the, the, the legacy media is talking about, oh, 110 dead. Well, it's close. You know, the children that are missing, there are over 2000 children still missing. Yeah. So what's being put out to the mainstream is, it is not accurate in the slightest. It's tremendously skewed and the island is in trauma. Families are in trauma. It's going to be, um, you know, it will be dealing with PTSD for years. So, and the question marks are huge about, you know, well, was it deliberate? You know, and I think, yes, it was at this point in my research. Um, you know, what's the future of Maui, which actually is really exciting. I think, Elizabeth, because, um, I, I've realized that Maui is, um, it's such a heart center on the planet. There are so many millions of people who have had the opportunity to fall in love with her and walk her shores and swim in her waters and, and feel the, the love that is that heartbeat of Polynesia. And, and it's about unification. The original Hawaiian people were, they accepted as Hawaiian anybody of the Aina whose heart and spirit was of the land, whether they were black, yellow, red, white skin, it didn't matter. And so the original Hawaiian teaching was very inclusive and and unifying. And so I've realized that, um, actually, I just kind of woke up to this last week and I'm doing a podcast on it um, with my own podcast that I'm starting, Cracking the Matrix, about this opportunity Maui presents to bring people together of all races in our hearts and hold up a higher standard for where Maui is going to be in the future, how it's developed, that it's developed with heart, with traditions, with unification, with uh, grace, with compassion in mind, and not be a a globalist playground and developed for commercial purposes and um, and made into a 15 minute smart island. So um, it's a, it's a great opportunity. It's, it's easy to just kind of like dwell in the ashes and go, Oh my God. And Oh my God. And, but it's like, Oh my God, what an opportunity we have here to come together. So that's kind of the state of the state of Maui at the moment. But that's really positive. I love that. That's really beautiful. And I think, you know, it is what we make it. It it is what you make it. And if you say as long as you don't let, you know, those globalists come in and do whatever, whatever they want to do and you, you keep it on track with what you need to do as residents, I think, yeah, it can, you can create something really positive from this. Yeah, yeah. Well, and as we were talking earlier before we started recording, it's like it's very much a, but people have to also know what they're actually dealing with. Yes. So so that they can come together and stand not against something, but for something else. Yes. And with that, let's move on to the first question, (laughs) because I loved your book. I really, really loved it. And we were talking before about how we both feel that this this type of information is so unwanted by the rest of the world, but it's so needed. And I think we're both on the same lines here because I know, you know, you're looking at it from that people need to know this because they need to know how to deal with it. And in your book, you give very, very detailed solutions and explanations of how to deal with it. And from my own standing, I feel that we need to have this knowledge because we need to know who we really are so that we can know where we're going. And I think without having this true knowledge of our world, we're, all, we're, we're just going to carry on being lost little children. And we need to have this information, this knowledge. So we, um, in 
terms of your book, you're very much talking about the, 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 the dark forces, the dark agendas, the AI agendas, the transhumanism, all of this, and looking at how we essentially have been duped and brainwashed in this reality that we're living in. Of course, it's this 3D matrix that we're living in. And one of the first questions I wanted to ask you is, can you stand in your power whilst being unaware of this multidimensional field matrix that we exist in? Is it possible to actually ascend and, you know, and to be this empowered human being without having that understanding of what is really going on in our world? That's the question that I've been chewing on for two years. Um, my knee jerk reaction is I don't think it's possible to be able to fully be in your power if you're being simultaneously manipulated by forces that you're completely unaware of and therefore following that agenda that isn't your own that you yet believe is your own, which it, it, it's such a twisty thing. Um, I, I've spent 40 years in the whole new age spirituality um, arena, meditating my derriere off and um, and written books about enlightenment and consciousness and, and the, the nature of the ego, the nature of enlightenment. And it's all been from personal experience. So, so, you know, I'm, I'm glad I spent 25,000 hours meditating <laughs> and it, it opened up so many vistas and expansiveness for me. And at the same time, everything about what I was trained to do was to get out of my body and to seek a higher, you use the word ascend, um, a higher ascended self that isn't this, that's out of my body and out there somewhere. And that that's where bliss and union lie. And I've come to recognize that that's part of the twisted message, a part of the dark agenda that's infiltrated religion and the spirituality message is that it's not out there. There's nothing out there. It's all, all in here. So 40 years trying to get up and out and i've finally come to realize oh shoot it's down and in this mm. is where my power lies you know jesus said it very clearly the kingdom of heaven lies within not out there <laughs> and so researching this agenda um and what i've come to recognize is an interdimensional anti-life intelligence that is from a completely different source than planet earth that does not belong here it's been here for i have no idea how long thousands of years spinning its web creating a matrix a mental matrix of lies and an alternate reality that we've finally been completely inculcated into and believe is what's really going on um i believe my government is is out to to protect me and and do the best for me i believe that you know experimental drugs are great to inject into my body and that pharmaceutical companies should make billions off of it um i i, I think it's all for my best interests and and i need to work hard and keep you know be competitive and be in conflict with the other people you know this is what we've been trained to believe. So if I'm immersed in this, I call it a matrix. I love the matrix movie. If we're immersed in this alternate reality that is not real, how can I be in my power if I'm in an alternate reality and I don't even know it? You know, all, for thousands of years, you know, the Vedas, all of the ancient scriptures always talk about we have to move past Maya. We have to move past illusion. Well, in the spiritual arena, I thought, yes, I have to crack the illusion of the self, okay? I have to get beyond my horrible ego. I have to transcend that. I have to kill that. And I have to get out there to a better place and a wiser, higher self with a capital S. And it's a rabbit hole because I'm already pure love. You're already a being of pure love. I cannot become what I already am. So I'm being led continuously away from my body, my true self. I can never allowed to relax into who I am in this matrix. And therefore I remain powerless because I'm always searching for something outside of myself that's better than me. And, you know, the, the, the big lie, and I, and I call it the lie in my book, Cracking the Matrix, 
the lie we've been sold and totally bought is that we are nasty, crappy, low lives that were corrupt because of the body, that were tempted and corrupt because of physicality, that we're dual, that we're separate, that we are violent, that we are greedy, that we are filled with conflict, and you just can't trust yourself. And we mm. bought it, hook, line, and sinker. And we, and you're looking at our world today. We, you know, all we have to do is look around and go, yeah, we've been living down to our own ideal. We've been, li- we've been living down to a totally erroneous picture of ourselves. We've been following a lie that we are not already beings of pure love. So how to finally get back to your original question, how can I stand up in my power believing that I that I am somehow corrupt, that I have, should be filled with shame, that I should be trying to be something other than what I am, endlessly chasing this image that's been given to me. I don't see how I can truly be in my power. The illusion, you know, this illusion that I always wanted to break through of the corrupt self and get past the dualistic mind and and become this great avatar, you know, it was like, and then I thought I was going to vault myself into a, a reality of bliss and sweetness and light. That was the reality. That was, you know, all right, I'm going to break through the matrix. and I'm going to get to the real world of bliss and light. And it's like, Oh, holy Moses, turning around and finally really investigating the other side of life, the dark side, if you will, and coming to realize the reality of it and its influence and what ignoring it has brought us to vaulted me into a completely different reality. I do not live in the same reality I lived in two years ago at all. It sure as hell isn't the reality that I thought I was going to get vaulted into when I cracked the illusion. So... I think the first step is getting out of the bloody matrix, getting out of the illusion of the storyland that we're in and going, oh, oh, holy Moses, this is what I'm dealing with. Oh, wow. I didn't see it before. Oh, wow. Okay. But there's a way out. Oh my God. Yes. And I'm whole and I'm me and I'm, I'm pure love. And oh, now I'm in my power. Now I'm grounded and I can, and I can step forward, not against something because that world actually is an illusion. Even though it's very real, it's an illusion, Mm. you know, back to the land of spiritual paradox. But um, so, yeah, so that's that's my very long winded answer to your question. (laughs) Yeah, it's understanding that, uh, you know, we are we are all of it. You know, we are love. We are God. We are source. We are all of these things, you know, however. And, you know, maybe even this entire physicality is, you know, is just a holographic reality, which is looking very much like it is. I mean, science is, seems to be very much along those lines. I remember when I first started my spiritual journey and it was very much connecting to spirit guides and I, I learned how to channel. And then, you know, sort of four, five, six years later, I now realize that all of that is just, <laughs> it's just me. And then the more I evolved, the more I understood that I am the spirit guide. You know, there is nothing outside of us. We are it. We are love. We are God. We are source. We are all of these things. And it, you know, it helps one to see life in a very different way. Um, but yeah, coming back to um, this, I want to sort of talk a little bit more about this anti-life force, because yeah. I think. This is the type of information which I know is so scary to people. I mean, it's just so scary to people that nobody wants to deal with it. But I feel very called to sort of the same as you that I, you know, that I need to sort of say to people, this is very important because we need to wake up to this because it's actually once we've woken up to it, it has no hold over us anymore. It cannot do anything to us. It is purely a mind virus, as you say in your book. And so being scared is bringing our vibration down and allowing more crap, you know, into our into our space, our field, if you like. Being standing up to it and saying, no, I'm not accepting this as my truth. I'm not accepting this as my reality. That is, in fact, all we have to do. And we have to see what is going on around us. So this very unsavory truth 
that our governments are corrupt, that the there are certain world leaders, you know, um, very, very prominent families who are keeping us in this controlled narrative for reasons of their own. I think many, many people have a real problem with understanding that this is planned, that this is a planned reality. And, you know, I, I, this, this is, um, I think everyone can, can understand that governments are corrupt. Everyone can understand, you know, maybe even they can understand that the viruses were, you know, man-made, created. Maybe they can even understand that vaccines, you know, were created for money. But the idea that vaccines were created for depopulation or yeah. the idea that there is a planned agenda out there in any form or other, and the idea that's the World Economic Forum behind this, these are, are truths that very, very, very few people can accept as truth and reality. So the, the next question is, why do you feel that more people aren't aware of this, this anti-life force? Well, to start off, I'm going to kind of back up with some of what you just said. And and I think one of the reasons it's so invisible and, and that it's possible that something like a depopulation agenda, control agenda um, could is possible because of our basic decency. Yeah, because we are love. We are love. The we are vast, people. vast majority of people simply want to live sweet lives find a mate, raise their kids to be happy, contribute to their community, express themselves creatively in, in some productive way, and live their lives. That's the 99%. Yeah. That's the 99%. So the fact, I, two, three years into this now, Elizabeth, I struggle sometimes. It's just like, I see one more thing the Lahaina fire and I go oh god no this couldn't possibly uh, shoot so I struggle with it you know it was it was it was the whole COVID it was the whole COVID mess that that woke me up um I literally three years ago just sat and went looked at a world gone mad with fear and the lockdowns and the mandates and the agendas and I was like oh my God, what is really going on? Mm -hmm. And so that's when I turned around and I looked and I started to investigate the nature of evil on this planet. And much to my surprise, I realized as I researched that every culture on every continent, back thousands of years, every civilization has identified this presence, this interdimensional mind parasitic presence. <clears throat> they call it Satan, Beelzebub, Aishatan, Iblis, the Hawaiians call it Eepa. Science fiction writers call it the mind parasites. Um, Carl Jung called it the Antimimos, the, basically the Antichrist. Uh, Native American, uh, some tribes call it Windingo. Uh, the Iroquois Nation, I believe, calls it Wetiko. And it's known to be an infiltrator that drags down a human being's consciousness and takes them to their lowest common denominator, takes them into emotional states, um, debauch states, um, anything that can be conflict and divisive. It's what sets us at each other's throats. This has been known for thousands of years. So then my question was, well, you know, I go, oh, my God, look at that. How could we have missed this? And so then the book, you know, I had to invent, well, how did we miss it? Number one, I think we're dealing with the decency. We are decent people. So it's really hard to even credit the dark. And it's bloody scary. So who wants to look at that? Religion has been twisted such that it has made satan this ludicrous red being with horns and a forked tail that you know with a pitchfork and so i'm i'm given the picture of this in a ludicrous form that you know if i if i buy that there was a snake in a garden that handed a woman the only woman an apple and that's why women now you know bear forth children in pain and we have to slave and you know if I believe that story and and then I look at Satan and it's equally ludicrous, so I dismiss it. Hmm. That's a bunch of bull. Fairy tales. Something fodder for scary movies. Next. So I don't see it. 
I don't give it any credibility. The spirituality uh, arena has been equally infiltrated and it's been, look at the light. No, you don't want to look at darkness and fear. It's called spiritual bypassing on any number of different levels. And so, and so we don't. And then, of course, the whole spirituality message is to get out of your body. And so we have no strength. In that we think we, and then we have been convinced that mind over matter, I can focus my mind and, and create a whole different reality. Well, okay. How's that working out for us? And, you know, I, I worked with a movie with the filmmakers of what the bleep do we know? I'm partially responsible for marketing that idea to the entire planet, which seemed like a good idea at a time, at the time, but it was so missing embodiment. It was completely missing heart. It was completely missing the rest of the story. And so now we're in this, you know, mind days. We're in a matrix. We're in a in a false reality anyway that is a mind trap. And now we're being convinced that if I just, you know, create my own reality in my mind, now we're in assimilation and assimilation. We're still not empower, empowered and in our bodies and grounded and whole. So, you know, and I, I do get into some of the ancient genetic manipulation of the human race that seems kind of obvious. And I and I get into some pretty decent detail in the book about how we have been genetically altered to be um, docile and accepting leadership and to look to external authority. You know, God is the ultimate external authority. But, you know, that trickles down into, well, you know, I'm just going to wait for Senator Hoo-ha to save me or President la da so it's very much, um, you know, the message really is in empowerment and empowering people to stand up and take responsibility of, I suppose, of this reality, of their reality. And, you know, not just their lives. I mean, I know that we, you know, we are conscious, um, we're a network of conscious observers and therefore we're creating this reality together. I understand that. However, we have an individual aspect of that as, as well you know we are individually responsible for creating our own reality but one of the things that I understood from researching my first book is that the the first rule of everything is taking responsibility so you know as you say standing in your power taking back your power being sovereign whatever it may be that is the number one rule of anything and then the next one is understanding yourself, having a true, you know, having a strong self-identity, these sorts of things. And then I would say the next one is, is, you know, having all the information, understanding what's really going on around you, escaping that matrix, that brainwashing. But, you know, these things, it's, as you say, that groundedness. And of course, you know, the new age spirituality, yes, it's been taking everyone out of their body. I sort of felt like, the religious teachings, the Bible, if you like, even Jesus' teachings, was sort mm. of like a self-help book of its day. It's mm. actually teaching us what we are truly capable of, who we really are, and how we navigate and work this 3D reality in order to thrive in this reality. And I feel that that's what has been taken away from us, is that knowledge, you know, with the, the, the as you say, the the religious uh, texts and the, the books and everything being just completely and utterly edited to such a degree that no one even understands them anymore. Right. But there's information in there. And I always felt that it, it would have to have been an important book. Otherwise, the Romans would have just destroyed it completely. The fact that they couldn't destroy it means that it was already out there in the world. They were taking very historical teachings and they changed it and edited it to something that they could then control, hence the, you know, the, the Church of Rome. But within that, there were always those, those teachings of how to use the human body to work this, this physical reality to our best ability. Because as you say in your book, you know, we're spiritual beings having this physical experience, but it was never, it was never supposed to be like this. It was never supposed to be this type of physical experience. We've been pulled down to such a lower consciousness, such a low level that this is nothing like what we were supposed to be experiencing. Yes. You know, and I know people talk about how this is university, but I don't believe any of this was supposed to be our life lessons or no. our experiences or anything like that. And I understand that the dark and the light need to be together, but evil is something completely different. And as you rightly say, this is mind parasite. 
this is yeah. different it's yeah. not us it's not us it's a completely different species if you will and one of the things that finally made sense um i'm a great fan of a woman by the name of jacqueline hobbs um aka oracle girl oraclegirl.org um I was listening to something she was saying and in the middle of whatever she was talking about, she said, and you know, this interdimensional uh, force, these interdimensional forces are not from, are, are not, are from a different source. And then she went on and I was like, what? <laughs> because like you and everybody else, at least in the West, we've been raised with this monotheistic idea of there's one source, one God, one love. It's all love, the universal love source, the universal consciousness love source, whatever you want to call it. There's just one and everything comes from that, which leads us down the gnarly path that nobody has been able to satisfactorily explain ever is, well, if God is love, then why was evil created? Well, then we have to go into storyland to pretend to figure this out and make sense of something that doesn't make sense. Oh, well, Earth is a school and we're supposed to learn this thing about the dark side. And and then when I transcended that and then it's like, and yet, and yet, yes, ritual rape of children is fine, I guess. It, you know, it's bad, but you know, it's, it's really love because it's a lesson I'm supposed to learn. And I don't mean to trivialize people. I mean, I was so in that bath of, you know, it's all love. And, and I had to ignore evil. Uh, and I was not confronted. I now have people that I know who have survived, um, satan satanic ritual abuse. I, I have friends who were trained to be assassins who were so fragmented through torture and rape and abomination and cannibalism as little children to be completely fragmented and then become tools of whatever elitist agenda, you say tool of the devil, but and that's really what it is. And, you know, so we, we keep trivial, like, trivializing and trying to explain in logical terms that earth is a school and that's why evil exists okay and we keep trying to swallow what's unswallowable compassion sense we're trying to make sense of something that doesn't make sense and so we believe this because when i put it in the school context or i put it in the soul contract context then i can swallow it you know, I had, I still have psychologist friends who would, you know, at a cocktail party casually or a dinner party casually talk, oh, well, you know, I've got another a satanic abuse victim in my, in my chair, you know, that I'm dealing with. Well, what do I do with that? There's no, there was no overarching context for me to put that and make that useful information. And, you know, on another psychologist friend saying, you know, it's unbelievable the statistics of satanic abuse in this, in this country. Well, what do I do with that? Again, there's no context, no reason for me to do anything with that. It's just like, well, whatever. But confronted with the reality of it, which is, again, back to how do we empower ourselves and how do we come out of the matrix is and how do we how do we we have to actually turn and look at what is really going on and see it without blinders on and without obfuscation and 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 childish stories to try to make sense of what doesn't make sense and just go wow so when i heard jacqueline say that this these entities this intelligence this interdimensional anti-life force comes from a different source altogether boy talk about an expansive thought mm, huh. i think it comes from a parallel universe actually because i think different universes are structured in different ways sure and this is something which Corey Good, uh, he talks about this, and David mm -hmm. Wilcox talks about this as well. Yeah. They both um, mentioned this. And I actually, I actually think that sounds more believable. It doesn't what belong here. It's oil and water. It doesn't belong here, no. Because when I finally turned around and looked at this presence and, ex and, and dissected it to this level, and then I realized, oh, my God, that is not me. I dis I I stepped out of the lie that I was a shameful, evil, corrupt being. We have we have how many thousand generations of epigenetic trauma of built in shame, especially in the Western culture, of thinking that we're corrupt evil beings. And so, so this is again, the thing that keeps us locked into not looking in the closet because, oh my God, what am I going to find there? I'm going to, I'm going to find that I'm, I don't, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot bear to look. 
So mm-hmm. we don't look thinking it's real. It's not me. When I got that and I realized that th- that this force doesn't have the can't pick up a tissue. It doesn't yeah. have the power to pick up a bloody tissue. It's got to work through us by selling us the lie that we're it so that we as powerful creators of love and life can put it into motion and hand ourselves and our planet and our reality over to it. And we end up with the with the shit show that we've got going on now. You know, and I look at, at all of the good Lord, how many millions of self-help books are sold every year? How many millions of people meditate? How many millions upon millions of people turn to God and say, please, this is not right. Help. You know, if we were so corrupt at heart, would we be doing any of that? No. The goodness on this planet is just is staggering. And it really is the 99%. Yes. And let's let's just mention that because, of course, 99 percent are watching one percent of the media, the mainstream media. And it's the mainstream media who are putting out in all of their films, their newspapers, their documentaries, everything. Yeah, it's supporting what they want us to believe, which is a, a reality, um, you know, an unsavory reality based on an evil world, you know, based on people killing each other everywhere, based on terrorism. You know, all of this has been created by this 1% mainstream media in yep. order to make us believe that all of this is true. Yep. You know, that we are living in this terrible, awful world. But if you move yourself away and off these platforms yep. and you actually go out into the world and talk to real people, you soon wake up. You soon realize that none of that is true. No, that true. is just the film industry, the newspaper yep. industry. The documentary, docu-series industry, you know, whatever, whatever. It's corporations own 90% of all of the media. And those in those six corporations are in turn owned by three overlords, if you will, BlackRock, Vanguard, and State Street. It's three yeah. mega asset firms control all of this. They control the media and they control the pharmaceutical industries. Same thing. Something like 70% of the news advertising in the United States is funded by the, is funded by pharmaceutical companies. The news, 70% of news advertising is funded by pharmaceuticals. So so it's like the self-interest, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, it's, 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 it's a huge smoke and mirrors dance. The next question, and I think probably we've already already sort of talked about this, but how has human perception being tricked into believing such a false reality and i think you know you've really talked about this that we are decent beings we are decent humans and we cannot we cannot connect or empathize with anything like that with anything in in that evil no no i think we've really kind of covered it um just mostly the religious influence um and the moment television and radio came in, the, the airwaves is so interesting. All of this <clears throat> electromagnetic frequencies, you know, one of the things that I haven't talked about and, and I, and I talk about it in the book is that, and I'll, I'll call them the archons. The Greeks called this, these beings, the archons, all interdimensional in, influences that would drag down and try to basically possess human beings, take them over so that they could operate through them and have a physical experience. So the archons um, actually have a interdimensional frequency technology that they've been using. This is what I've come to understand that we're being saturated in a, in a low frequency message all the time of European who basically, and you should just grovel and be the violent, disgusting creature that you are. That's the message. And then now we've got, we've got smartphones, we've got microwaves, we've got, you know, dog fences pulsing God knows what, you know, electromagnetic frequencies at us. We're being bombarded with this, the, 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 the power of imagery. I don't think we have got a freaking clue how powerful television is and visual media. So the average, get this, the average American watch a cumulative 250 billion hours of television a year. 
by the time you're 65, you've received over 2 million, you have absorbed 2 million advertisements. By the time a kid is 18 on this planet, they've seen over 40,000 rapes and murders right in front of their eyes. So this is the message we're being bombarded with. And we're, we're so, you know, it just it. Oh, have you seen the latest Transformer movie? It's so cool. We don't, we don't know what it's doing to us. Mm. So that's, that's the short, really pungent um, answer to that question of how, how are we, how are we being manipulated? How are we not being manipulated? I mean, it really puts us into the, you know, the, the, this, the film industry, you know, the TV industry, they have so much power. They, and because of that, they have a lot of responsibility. And this is, it, it's, it's being, I think, completely abused in terms mm-hmm. of what we are being shown and what children are being shown mm-hmm. and what is, you know, what is supposed to be PG 13 or PG 15 is just not. So, you know, we get the, the nice lulling music coming on. We get the theta brain waves and we are totally suggestible at that point. Yeah. And everything that we are seeing, our mind believes is happening and it is a reality for our mind. And our mind goes to bed that night believing that we have lived in that reality that, as you say, covers all of that horror and violence and aggression. Yep. And I don't and people do not they do not understand this because they haven't been taught this. That's right. And they're not going to be taught this, not by the mainstream. It just the other day, I was just like, I was raised in the 50s with cartoons. This was the first, you know, Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck and and uh, Popeye and all that. And I'm like, wow, I have, you know, ducks and people beating coyotes over the head with hammers and throwing things off cliffs and smashing this and, you know, beating up that. And I'm like, who thought that up for little children? But really, the the thing to do is to see it. And then, you know, the power lies in turning around and actually seeing that this is going on and going, okay, truly, I cannot express the level of freedom I have felt since I that I'm embodying and the, the amount of power that I feel in my being as a total being grounded in my truth that I am a being of pure love. And that I live on a planet with other beings of pure love. And we have been hoodwinked. And I'm not going to be hoodwinked anymore. So at that point, it becomes, you know, so much of the agenda is let's turn around and fight the dark. The white hats, the black hats. Good versus evil. Would I turn around and fight something that doesn't have the strength to pick up a piece of tissue? Hello? Walk away. We create, we go to our neighbors and say, let's create a neighborhood garden so we can eat nice, natural, organic food. And we're not subject to um, CRISPR technology in our vegetables. Yes, pesticides and graphene. Pesticides and graphene oxide and whatever else is being put in in the food. Um, It's just like, let's um, create hours banks where, you know, people can barter time to help one another. And that doesn't take us into the monetary system anymore. There are so many things. Human, our creativity is so vast. The love and creation is so incredible. This force has no imagination. It is a binary. That's why it's aligned with AI. It is a binary ones and zeros kind of automaton intelligence. That's it. It has no life force to it. It has no grace to it. It has no love to it. It doesn't understand it. And you can't fix it because it doesn't come from here. Yeah. You cannot, you know, the, the whole new age, oh, well, I'm going to turn around and I'm going to love the beast. No, just walk away. Don't feed it. It feeds on energy. This force feeds on our emotions. And when I feed it love, it just goes, oh, no, no, no. Thank you very much. Give me more. So, you know, and, and this is not easy. Man, this is easier said than done because I want to mix it up sometimes. I just want to get in there and just, you know, punch something. And it's just like ground. Okay, hi. Mm -hmm. I'm a creative being. I'm going to create something that we've all been yearning to experience. Who we really are in alignment, mutual support, love, grace, beauty, creativity, mutual support. That's what I want. And that's why I wrote the book. And that's why I'm talking with you is like, yeah, it's time to create what we've always known we're equal to. So we're creating a better world, a more a more positive world. 
how if people are struggling with negative entities, which of course is the you know the the AI, the Archon, um, yeah. it's not them. You know they perceive these negative entities outside of them. They perceive the depression or the you know the um, suicidal thoughts or whatever inside of them. How do people get beyond that? What's the first step for them? I know it's uh, a huge question. If it was if it was me, I would say the first thing is to step outside of it. No, it's not you and observe it. And I do actually send them love. And I've noticed that when I send them love, they literally go running. But you're right. Absolutely. The first thing is to stop and center yourself in your body, in your the body doesn't lie. The yeah. mind lies all the time. It's tricked constantly. The body is never tricked. And so, you know, and I say throughout the whole book, start grounding in the body and feel into what your heart, mm-hmm. you know, because I'm not going to try to separate, separate out heart, soul and spirit. It's like, let's yeah, just get yeah. into that love frequency of unity and that sweet space inside and go, OK, even though it's giving me a message that doesn't seem to make any sense, learn to follow that. And and to I I, I cannot downplay the role of sincerity that once we step into the place of oh the moment we really engage this not from an airy fairy um being taught from outside i read some book some spiritual guru told me my mantra none of that inside that deep deep sincere i want to be who i really am and i am already who i really am so uh, and ground in that sincerity then the pathway will open up whoever it takes you to, whether it takes you to a, um, uh, a, a psychologist to, to help with depression or with voices in your head or whatever. Great. If it takes you to a shaman and that's where your heart leads you, not your mind, your heart. Great. If it leads you to a book. Great. That's, that's the only way out of the jungle that I know Elizabeth is, is really get sincere in in this heart space and and if you start feeling the tugs well you talk about intuition all the time that's that's one of your learning to 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 hear the voice of your your own intuition your own voice that is absolutely critical yeah and i feel before you can do that you have to know who you are and who you're not yep you have to know you're not that you have to yes. step out of the lie Yes. So those critical thoughts, those negative thoughts, those nasty thoughts, those mean thoughts, whatever, you know, those words that come into your head, they're not you. They're not you. You can just tell them, you know, to bugger off. You can send them love and light. You know, you can, you know, (laughs) yeah, you know, you, yeah, exactly. Whatever, whatever, but they're not you. Yeah. Just, just being able to, and I love what you say in your book about this, that just doing that, it it takes the power away from the mind virus and back into you and just doing that disintegrates them yeah. because as you rightly say they have no power they have no body they yeah. have no nothing you know they and that is why of course we cannot move into ai at this moment in time because we are not heart led enough as a species and we are still in the mind and the mind can be hijacked and of course, the mind has been hijacked, which is what the mind parasite has done. Thing, the world of spirituality, religion, everything, um, education, oil. medicine, you name it. Yeah, it's been in all of it's been infiltrated by the mind parasites, the mind virus. So but understanding that they they truly have no power. They are trying to, if you like, take over us as a species so that they can live through us. But we we just all we have to do is just cut that tie cut that string cut the identification with it yes and realize you know just push it out there it's not it's not part of us not even push it not even push it because then i'm giving it energy there's that i ground in who i really am and that takes care of it ground in that energetic space that automatically takes care of it that cannot penetrate yeah what I find helps as well is pushing love out of me. So understanding that I am love, standing in love myself, and then pushing love out of me. And I find that just pushes everything out, you know, and all everything is gone. I see AI popping up 
everywhere. It's coming up on everything. You know, even yep. on Gaia TV, they had a, um, even on there, you know, some prominent speakers of whom I admired were even talking about AI is now a done deal. It's now part of our world. How do we navigate this? And I don't think that we should we I don't think we should be accepting it as a done deal or part of our world just yet. Even Elon Musk has said that we need to put a halt on this. We, you know, he has reached out um, to other corporations and said we need to put a halt on this just for six months so we can get our bearing. Yeah. Because when something moves this fast, again, it's it's moving too fast. It's like impulse buying. You always regret it the next day. We can't move this fast on something so huge. No. And again, it's like, um, what world are we trying to salvage? I, I again, it's like I'm I'm so in a place of focusing on what has already been birthed within all of us. And, you know, maybe down the road, AI has a role in that because we have we're coming from pure love. Who knows? But I'm not even going to try to address it and mix it up with that. Um, and it's so hard to take my attention off of the headlines and, you know, and, and I see a lot of gnarly information come across my desk because I've, you know, I've been researching all of this stuff and, and it's, it's, it's got its own hypnotic appeal. It's like, oh, wow, what's, what's screwed up next? Ooh, ah, ooh, that's bad. It's like, oh, stop, Kate. Oh. In my body, what am I going to do? Okay, I'm going to, you know, reach out to my neighbors about gardening, and I'm going to build this, and I'm going to create that. I, it's mm-hmm. like it's it's a turning away. Okay, so you're just not putting any attention on it at all. Right? It's a fine line for me because it's my journalistic path to, you know, know what's going on sufficiently so I can write about it and talk about it, but not get caught in it. And so, you know, it, that's what well, the whole spiritual, you know, the, the knife edge, you know, walk, it's very much a, a, a knife edge walk. Um, but I'm so happy to, to report that there is freedom. And I mean, all we have to do is declare ourselves free. Are they going to show up at my gate? And, you know, if we think consciousness creates reality, if I am seriously involved in creating and, and supporting and community and, and not creating a, a love bubble world where, oh, have to do is sit on my Zen pillow and just focus it on, you know, and, and do a storyboard on it or a vision board. It's just like, no, go out and talk to your neighbor and start a garden. Take your kid out of school. Take their freaking smartphone away from them. Get rid of your own. You know, take action. And the more we take action, the more empowered we become. We know what right action is. Do no harm. Do no unintentional harm. Support what's life-giving. Support what's nurturing, support what creates community and upliftment, and support inspiration. I'm not going to deny that we live in a physical world built on protons and electrons, on positive and negative electromagnetic forces. Sure, that doesn't mean we're not unified beings. But to play the white hat, black hat game, it's all about creating conflict. And you're wrong. No, you're wrong. Get it? Uh Uh-uh. No. That's the game that keeps us locked in prison. So um, it, it, to, to not blame, to not shame, to not attack any of that, but to focus on creating from the heart, it's a different ball game. Yeah. And energetically creating a new reality, because, of course, we all live in a different reality anyway, because we're all a different frequency. Right. So energetically creating the reality that we want to live in, which oh. in in a, a lovely, you know, sort of positive way, actually allows us to live in that reality now rather than wishing and wanting a better world. You know, all of those mental creations. No, we've, we, we, we can be love in action. We need to bring together the mental, the spiritual, the emotional and the physical. We are what? What are we talking about? We're talking about oneness. Yeah. You know, we've talked about it and, and, you know, aspired to it, thinking it was something out there. No, it's right here, right now. Walking, so, talking, chewing gum. <laughs> we are it. And of course, yeah. that leads us back to the beginning when we were talking about the plans for Maui now. Yeah. Uh, you now have a blank canvas and you can create whatever reality you want on that blank canvas. And it's really doing that together, you know, as a community, as you talked about, and not letting the 
the other people come in and take that and do something with it for themselves. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, my next step is I'm actually going to go do a podcast this afternoon about all Native peoples coming together on Maui. And then on Thursday, I'm joining a group of people, a small group of people just to meet to talk about creating an hours bank on Maui. And I'm just allowing my love to expand, my field to expand and magnetize into me the next step. I don't know what the next step is, but oh, this showed up. Yes, that feels my heart's going, yes, I can get behind my heart can get behind that. Yes, I will do that. That's the pathway for me at the moment. Yeah. And that's the intuitive, that's the intuitive pathway, which is the pathway that we are probably supposed to be living and is what we actually came here to do. Taking each day, present moment as it comes, and working with what we have at that present moment. And as you say, you know, the breadcrumb trail it presents itself and we always find what we need at that p- point but understanding that the present moment is actually the only reality that is the only thing that's real is this current present moment so we can only create from the present moment we can't create from tomorrow no. or yesterday <laughs> we can only create from now yeah yeah, yeah. that's really it's, lovely it's- It's very, it's lovely, you know, and I have to laugh because what I'm experiencing and living, embodying now is what I've spent 40 years aspiring to. But I thought in that 40 years of meditating and that that spiritual bubble I was in of the picture of how it was going to be was is not anything like I thought this was going to be. But I realize I am embodying exactly what I always dreamed. Wholeness, love, peace, joy, the ability to deal with conflict, the ability to deal with with alternating realities and and input and be able to walk steady in love. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. And that is all we have to do, isn't it? It's so simple. It's so simple. It's yeah. (laughs) I write about that in a different book. How about, you know, it's like it's so easy, but oh, my God, simple is so hard. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, because there's so much distraction around us uh, as we so much distraction and so much messaging that it has to be hard and that you haven't got it you know one of the things that really shocked me elizabeth was when i was when i was writing this book and i realized that society's message religion's message and the spiritual new age message was all the same thing you're not mm-hmm. enough be better you need to be somebody else. You need to be richer, thinner, um, more powerful, more loving, more enlightened. Oh, it's the same message. Oh, dear. <laughs> yeah, you need to be something that you're not. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So so being something that we are, what an, what an adventure. Yeah, being Discovering ourselves. What that is and yeah, living it. <laughs> Oh, that's a great place to end. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate your time. And please... Um, Tell people how they can connect with you, how they can contact you, how they can be part of what you're creating, maybe. And of course, how they can buy your book. Um, Um, They can reach me at uh, katemontana.com. And that's Kate with a C. Um, And I'm also on Substack, which is a really, really um, great burgeoning uh, web platform for intelligent heart-based people coming together and with really deep and intelligent conversations, Substack. Uh, it's cmontana.substack.com. Um, yeah, and my book's on Amazon, Cracking the Matrix, 14 Keys to Individual and Global Freedom. And that's on Amazon. And okay. yes, I totally welcome engagement. You know, write me. It, it's about coming together time. Yeah, well, I love what you were saying about what you were planning and the community in Maui. I mean, that just sounds so incredible, you know, and who's to say that we can't create that as a prototype for a new type of community and world that we want to create. Okay, I will put all the links that you said in the notes so people don't have to go looking for them. Okay, take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.